Ah, tá com o Avisou. As, as, semua dah tu. Ya, hari ni semua pisang. Yang first, first topic ni. Oh, the first topic is uh, for Arfa. Arfa Nadir. Tak, tak, tak masuk lagi ni. Uh, no Arfa. Ah, yes. No Arfa. Hari ni berapa ni? 23. 23. 23. Okay. Ya, yeah, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So, my name is Alfa. Uh, my talk today is uh, peripheral granulation. Hmm. Next. So, uh, I divided the topic into peripheral venous granulation and also hmm. peripheral arterial granulation. So, hmm. for the peripheral venous granulation, next. The indication firstly is for the blood sampling and also intravenous fluid medication and also administering blood components. Next, uh, the contraindication, uh, the absolute contraindication includes uh, if there is any infected site, any site of burn in or any injured site. And the relative contraindications is uh, we need to avoid a paralyzed extremities and we do not insert in a massively edematous extremity and we do not insert uh, an intravenous distal to the injured organ for example we do not use the lower extremities when treating abdominal injuries and we also avoid the joint area if we want to do the peripheral venous cannulation next so next is uh, uh, the technique on we do the peripheral can, uh, cannulation. Firstly, we need to identify the wind for when a puncture. And usually, we uh, use the dorsum of the non-dominant hand, the wall aspects of the forearm, the dorsum of the foot, and also the great surface wind at the ankle as uh, I showed in the picture. Okay, next. Okay, so we secure the identified limb and we apply the tourniquet. And topical anesthetics may be applied with occlusive plaster an hour earlier or we spray the chloride for a short procedure. Uh, we clean the skin with alcohol swab and puncture it uh, and at once the needle or catheter in the same direction as the wind at 15 to 30 degrees angle as shown in the picture. Uh, okay. And the next in when the puncture, the blood is collected when, when the once the blood flows out from the needle, and the needle is then removed, and pressure applied once sufficient blood is obtained. And in setting an intravenous line, the catheter is at once a few millimeters further, and once the blood appears, then we withdraw the needle slightly, and we at once the catheter over the needle. And we remove the tourniquet and flush the catheter with heparinized saline. And we secure the catheter and connect it to either rubber bank or intravenous drip. And uh, usually if uh, in children, uh, they usually move a lot. So uh, sometimes we can immobilize the joint above and below the site of catheter insertion with restraining board and tape to avoid the dislodgement of the cannula. Okay, next. Uh, these are among the complications of peripheral venous cannulation, which includes uh, infection at the site of uh, cannulation, hematoma, skin ulceration, air or particle embolism, blood clot, and also thrombophlebitis. Next. Okay, for the peripheral arterial can, uh, cannulation, the indications include if you want to collect uh, the arterial blood gas sample, if we want to do any invasive uh, blood pressure monitoring and if we do, if the children need frequent blood taking. Okay, next. Okay, the contraindications include uh, Allen test. Uh, if uh, the Allen test uh, shows a compromise, 
collateral circulation. So it is an absolute contraindication for us to do um, arterial cannulation. And the other contraindication includes circulatory defects and infected sampling area. And the relative contraindications include coagulation abnormalities and if the patient has any disease associated with hypercoagulability or hypocoagulability. And if a patient has hematoma at the side and anatomy abnormalities in the limb, it can also be a relative contraindication. Next. Okay, this is the technique. Firstly, we need to check the anaf collateral circulation by modified island test. So what is my modified island test? It is uh, when we uh, put we depress the radial and ulna artery of the patient and uh, we release uh, the ulna artery and we see if the, there is any blood that return to the palm and if it returns it means the patient has a normal blood uh, collateral circulation however if it is uh, uh, occluded so we cannot see any blood return so it become the contraindication. So once uh, we check there is a normal uh, blood flow, so we identify the radial pass and the other side that can be used includes uh, posterior tibial artery and also dorsalis pedis artery as uh, I show in the picture. Okay, next. Okay, uh, as usual, we can also uh, apply the topic anesthetic and we clean the skin with alcohol swab. We uh, dosiflect the wrist slightly and we puncture the skins at the same direction as radial artery at 30 to 40 degrees angle, which is a more if, if we compare to the peripheral venous cannulation earlier. And the catheter is at once two to three millimeter further when blood appears at the hub. Then we withdraw the needle while advancing the catheter. Next. Uh, uh, we ensure good flow and then we flush gently with a small amount of heparinous saline. And uh, if uh, the peripheral artery is also fully cannulated, we need to ensure that the arterial line is functioning. And uh, usually we can see uh, at the tubing, the arterial passation. And then we connect to a T connector and three-way stop cord to a syringe pump and we label the arterial line and also the time of the setting. Okay, next. Okay, next we run the heparinase line at an appropriate rate. And for neonate, usually uh, we give 0 0.5 to 1 millimeter per hour. And uh, 1 millimeter and up to 3 millimeter per hour for uh, blood pressure monitoring. However, we will stop if there, uh, if we can see any skin mottling or any blanching. And uh, also the same, we will immobilize the joint above and below side of catheter insertion with restraining uh, board and tapes, taking care not to make the tape too tight because uh, the children uh, can move and can cause the uh, dislodgement of the cannula. Okay, next. And these are among the complication of the peripheral arterial cannulation, which includes uh, arterial spasm, which may lead to ischemia and also gangrene. And uh, in your neck especially, they can have digital and distal limb ischemia, uh, any bleeding from the insertion site, and also uh, hematoma. Okay. This is my uh, references. Okay. Um, that's all from me for the topic of peripheral cannulation. Ada the video? Uh, tak ada pula. Video tak ada? Is <laughs> hmm. boleh ni cari video tak? Next. Presentation mesti ada video. Fizu hmm. boleh cari video tak? Tak apa, tak apa. Just present. Next, next presentation. Next presentation. Presenter, uh, I'm going to continue with uh, lumbar puncture. Lumbar puncture. So, what is Yes. Uh, but I'm sorry, I always did not uh, include any video presentation. By that, you can include video. Oh. 
Macam orang yeah. before this, dia orang masukkan video. You orang tak tanya ke grup-grup sebelum ni macam ni orang buat? You orang uh, ni buat yes. inside video so. Ah, oh, proceed. Okay. okay, so um, moving on to the second topic, uh, second procedure today, it is uh, lumbar puncture. So uh, it is lumbar puncture is really done in several conditions. Uh, so um, suspected central nervous system infection is the most common emergency indication for lumbar puncture in children. Uh, this is because we want to start empirical antibiotics uh, as as soon as possible. And uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage is a uh, a less common uh, indication for lumbar puncture in children. This is because uh, CT scan is uh, able to catch uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage and better. And uh, therefore, uh, lumbar puncture is only done to diagnose uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage if uh, they are clinically suggestive of subarachnoid hemorrhage, but the CT scan does not, uh, we cannot see the hemorrhage uh, through CT scan. And the uh, and uh, lumbar puncture is also done to diagnose some uh, neurological conditions uh, such as Killen-Barr syndrome, uh, in which we can find uh, elevated protein level in the uh, CSF analysis or juvenile uh, multiple sclerosis. And uh, some pediatric metabolic disease can be diagnosed by uh, um, central nervous system uh, fluid, CSF, uh, analysis such as uh, inborn errors of metabolism, in which we uh, this it is usually indicated when the, the, the patients are presented with an unknown cause of seizure. Uh, in cases of uh, CNS tumors, uh, acute lymphoblastic leukemia or lymphoma, the chemotherapy agents can be instilled uh, via intratracheal route, and um, which needs lumbar puncture. And uh, the anesthetic, anesthetic team may uh, also administer spinal anesthesia, as we observed before in our anesthesiology testing. So the contraindications for this uh, this procedure is um, the first one is if the patient has elevated intracranial pressure. This is because uh, patients with uh, increased intracranial pressure has higher risk for development of cerebral herniation after lumbar puncture, and therefore patients with uh, clinical evidence of increased uh, intracranial pressure, such as uh, papilledema, abnormal posturing, or uh, altered consciousness or in children balancing fontanelles or increased uh, head circumference. And we should um, refer for CT scan first uh, to, to rule out any, uh, any uh, mass causing the intracranial pressure, increased intracranial pressure. Patient, uh, and then patients with uncorrected bleeding disorders cannot undergo lumbar puncture. This is because of the risk of uh, spinal hematoma formation. And then patients with active uh, infections on the overlying skin or soft tissue uh, that uh, is on the puncture site. And they should not undergo lumbar puncture because of the risk of inoculating the organism into the spinal cavity, which may cause meningitis and other uh, infections. And a patient in shock must first be resuscitated and stabilized before we plan for lumbar puncture. And spinal anatomical abnormalities is actually a relative contraindication for lumbar puncture. This is because some of them can actually still undergo lumbar puncture safety with a proper assessment and uh, we can perform this procedure under, lumbar, uh, under fluoroscopy. Uh, and then um, we should first, uh, before, before starting this uh, procedure, we should first evaluate the patient for the presence of any signs for uh, any of the contraindication that I mentioned earlier. And uh, if the patient is hemodynamically, hemodynamically unstable, and then we need to resuscitate and stabilize them first. And then, um, actually, lumbar puncture is a frightening procedure for the child and the parents as well. Uh, therefore, we need to counsel uh, the patient, the, the, the patient and the, their parents, uh, on the why we need to do this uh, procedure and how we will do this procedure, and what is the expected uh, expected complications, and possible complications that can occur. Uh, and, and, and then it is a good practice to obtain a written consent because uh, this is an invasive pre uh, procedure. And there is, uh, it, it is rare, but uh, a serious complication of this procedure includes uh, cerebral herniation. And then uh, we need to gather the equipment, which I will explain in the next slide. And then uh, adequate analgesia can be achieved by lidocaine. Uh, we can apply it by a topical application or uh, local uh, 
allocate new nutrition. And then uh, if we need a stronger um, analgesic property, we can combine these two uh, routes. And then uh, we may need sedative if the patient is uh, uncooperative. Uh, and to, this is also can reduce the anxiety in the patient. And then um, the appropriate positioning of the patients allow the uh, accurate identification of the landmarks. And the two most commonly used position is the lateral recumbent position, as shown in the picture above, and uh, the sitting position in the picture below. So in lateral recumbent position, uh, both the neck and the hip should be flexed. And then sitting position is uh, chosen in patients uh, at high risk for respiratory compromise. This is because uh, if we do it in a lateral recumbent position, the neck will be hyperreflex and uh, it will worsen the respiratory uh, uh, issue. And uh, sit, uh, sitting position also improves the uh, cerebral spinal fluid flow in a very small infants, uh, especially those less than two weeks of age. And uh, but sitting position does not provide uh, accurate measurement of the opening pressure. And then uh, monitoring is uh, we do mon we monitor the patient based on the their uh, condition. Uh, but in general, uh, pulse oximetry and cardiorespiratory monitoring is advised throughout the procedure because of the risk for apnea. Usually, we so, uh, we we don't use this sitting position. Eh? In our setup, mainly we still on the lateral position. Jarang kita pakai sitting position. Okay, ha. Okay, thank you, Datuk. Okay, thank you, Datuk. Okay, so uh, these are the equipments uh, needed for this procedure. Uh, so as mentioned earlier, we need the locane one percent with uh, we maybe we need a uh, topical lidocaine. And then uh, we need spiral syringe with uh, 22 or 25 gauge needle uh, for lidocaine injection. And then we need uh, four spiral collecting tubes. Uh, each tube has their own uh, purpose, which I will explain after this. And then a uh, povidone iodine solution to clean the injection site, uh, the puncture site. And then we may need manometer to measure the uh, opening pressure. And then um, a 22 gauge uh, stylated needle to insert. Uh, to puncture the into the spinal uh, canal, and then we need uh, gauze for dressing and uh, resuscitation trolley must be available nearby. And then, uh, yeah. okay. So um, for the procedure itself, we should first uh wear proper uh personal protective equipment depending on the infectious risk. But uh, usually we just need a uh, level one uh PPE. Uh, and then we should first uh, locate and mark the puncture site. And since the conus medullaris ends at, at, uh, at the level of L3 in children, then we can choose the interspace between L3 and L L4 or L4 and L5 as the puncture site. And uh, for the landmark, uh, generally L4 is located in between the imaginary line that connects the two posterior superior iliac crest. So we can choose uh, the space above or below the L4. So um, for spiral technique, we clean the puncture site with povidone iodine solution or 2% chloroxidine gluconate in 70% isopropyl alcohol, but usually povidone iodine, uh, povidone iodine solution. And the cleaning should start at the puncture site and we move in circular motion while uh, increasing the circumference. And we need to make sure they recover uh, a large uh, area. And then we place the drape under the patient and cover other parts with the drapes and leave only the area of the puncture site. And um, before we insert the spinal needle, we need to make sure that the stylet is uh, firmly in place. And um, then we can uh, insert it uh, by, by either one hand or both hands. And then um, cutting needle like pinky or atrophin, uh, needs, we, we need to be more careful with cutting needles like uh, pinky or atrophin. Uh, to avoid the, cutting the dural fibers, which will uh, cause excessive uh, CSF leakage. Uh, and therefore, the use of atraumatic needles uh, like Scrot or Whitaker is uh, preferred because it is generally safer. And, and then we, uh, and then we uh, advance the needle slowly uh, at 45 degree angle. 
uh, in in plants until we can uh, we can sense we can appreciate a popping sensation, which means that the needles has uh, penetrated the dura uh, the dura layer, and we are we have entered the subarachnoid space. Uh, but some uh, some practice remove the stylet uh, earlier once they have uh, breached the skin. And, and then uh, once we are in, get, we get into the uh, subarachnoid space, uh, we remove the stylet and collect the fluid that, uh, that is uh, the, the fluids that comes out from the, the needles. And usually uh, around one mil uh, CSF is needed per, uh, for one tube. So in total, we need four mil of the uh, fluid. And then, uh, as I mentioned earlier, each, each tube has its own purpose. Uh, usually, the first tube is sent for uh, bacterial uh, examination for gram staining and culture. And the second tube is sent for biochemical uh, biochemistry analysis, uh, for, uh, for example, uh, to look for the level of glucose and protein. And the third is sent for uh, cell count and differential. And the fourth tube is reserved for uh, specific uh, investigations such as uh, Mm, viral titers or such as viral titers or uh, immunoglobulin uh, measurement. And then uh, once we have done with the uh, collecting, when we have done collecting the uh, fluids, we replace the stylet and remove the needle. And then we wash the antiseptic solution of the skin and cover the puncture site with a sterile adhesive bandage or dressing gauze. So uh, the most common complications uh, for this Procedure is the postural puncture headache, and therefore the patient is advised to uh, to have a bed rest for one uh, for one day, and this can open uh, this postural puncture headache is uh, can often be managed with bed rest and a brief course of uh, energy six on uh, on when uh, when needed basis, PR and basis, and um, back pain is another common problem reported uh, following lumbar puncture. And this usually resolves spontaneously after a few days and uh, prolonged pain should raise our suspicion for a localized infection or spinal hematoma. And um, radiculopathy can occur due to the nerve injury, but it is rare. And it can also occur as a result of a sudden reduction of pressure. And in this case, it, uh, the radiculopathy can be reversed, uh, is reversible. And the most uh, serious complication is the cerebral herniation. This often occurs in uh, patients with uh, elevated intracranial pressure. And therefore, uh, as I mentioned earlier, if we suspect the patient to have uh, increased uh, intracranial pressure, we need to undergo neuroimaging first before uh, we plan for lumbar puncture. This is because we want to rule out any lesions that is causing uh, increased intracranial pressure. And then, the, uh, in fact, another serious complication is infections, such as meningitis or spinal infection, but it is rare. And it is uh, it can occur if the lumbar puncture is performed through a soft tissue infection, uh, as mentioned earlier. Uh, that's it for my part. Do you guys have any questions? Any questions? Tapi tadi tadi ni ya. Kenapa tadi tu video? I'm sorry, Dato, because uh, I watched the videos from uh, the previous presenter, but I think uh, I, I want to explain it in my own words. I mean, uh, yeah, tapi boleh video tu, aduh visual tu, you all lebih 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 belajar, I tahu. Nothing better than aduh visual, uh -huh. I tahu you. Your work is orang yang faham, because on the skin <laughs> position, everything semua faham. You ni nak ajar orang, oh. Now, Jogang, that's why you need to do visual to explain how it was done. You can use Jogang in a pandai. Hmm? Next. Then. So, proceed. So, proceed next, we 
di Nesugi Street uh, nama? Intermission. Uh, Nadia. Nadia. Uh -huh. Okay. okay uh, so proceed with the Nesugi Street Intermission. So for the indication of the uh, engine tube is uh, either to decompress if there is bubble obstruction uh, for gastric emptying and uh, also for delivery of oral agent in the medication or nutrition and for uh, gastric intestinal hemorrhage excretion. The contraindication uh, for the anterior insertion is if there is maxillofacial trauma or esophageal abnormality such as uh, strictures. Okay, so next. Uh, next, have you seen? Okay, uh, so next is the equipment. Uh, so we will need the protective uh, protective uh, attire, which is a gown and also uh, a glove. Uh, and then the important thing is the anti tube uh, and also the switch or topic and anesthetic. This is um, not, uh, not mandatory. And then lubricant and uh, CO water or tower pads and insurance, data scope, and so wall section unit if you want to aspirate the gastric content. And so the next. So we ask the patient to breathe in each mushroom to assess which side uh, the patient is better and we premeditate the nasal cavity with basal constrictor uh, spray. Uh, and uh, for asking the patient is, uh, of course, it's applicable for all the children. And then we anesthetize the nasal cavity with topic anesthesia. Uh, this is uh, not mandatory. And, um, Post-anesophonic can also be anesthetized. And for the measurement of the, uh, I think we measure the depth of the entity by measuring the distance from the uh, the process uh, to the air room and to nose uh, Basically, we uh, take the distant part of the measured uh, tube. Uh, no, uh, it is like, okay. The part of the nasal gastric tube, uh, we place the distant part at the tip of the nose and then uh, we made uh, we measure the we the attitude to the ear loop and then from the ear loop to the uh, xiphoid process and then we mark the uh, length of the tube which is uh, means that it is uh, the length of the tube that will be inserted uh, in the in the chart okay. first the next okay, next uh, first we uh, when we want to insert the tube uh, we Lubricate the distal tip of the engine tube with the surgical jelly and we position patient sitting upright in sniffing position. So, this is for the older children. For the infant, for the infant we uh, wrap them in a, uh, in a blanket. And uh, for the younger children, of course, uh, we need help uh, to hold the child. Okay. And next is insert the tip of the nasal seat tube. Uh, to the nasal cavity slowly and advance posteriorly parallel to the flow of the nasal canal. And then once the reach, once the tube reaches the larynx, patient may have a gag reflex. So we temporarily halt the advancement and ask patient uh, to swallow sip of water uh, in all the children. Then we coordinate the advancement of the tube with the swallowing to facilitate the entry of the tube to the as a fake to prevent the entry to the trachea. Uh, for the uh, younger uh, younger child, younger children, uh, uh, we can uh, give pacifier to facilitate the swallow uh, reflex. Uh, and then once uh, the tube pass the larynx, so we just uh, advance this tube uh, slowly to the predetermined depth of the uh, uh, measurement. Okay. And next, next slide. Uh, uh, next slide. Hello? Oh, yeah. oh, oh, okay, 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 okay. okay. Uh, 
okay, so uh, to confirm the tip placement, we attach the catheter tip uh, to the, uh, the, the catheter syringe to the main port of the tube and we insufflate uh, 30 cc of air uh, while the other person is cutting the epigastrium. So gaglinus uh, will be edible. Uh, in infant, we can use uh, like uh, 50, uh, 10, 5 to 10 uh, cc uh, syringe. And then using the same string, we can spread the gastric contact and check the pH to confirm the placement of the tube. Uh, radiographic imaging can also be used to confirm the placement of the tube. And then we must assure that patient isn't in respiratory distress and able to speak. If uh, tracheal intubation occurs, so we, must, we must remove the uh, tube immediately. Uh, immediately, any sign of tracheal intubation in infant uh, include uh, if the patient is infant is coughing, choking, or there is a uh, color changes around the lips or the sinuses. Patient having trouble breathing, or uh, the patient keeps gagging and coughing even after we have placed the tube. So uh, we secure the tube with uh, adhesive tape, and uh, okay, and then, and then lastly, uh, after we have secured the tube to the patient and nose, uh, for this or uh, for the young infant. Uh, we can take the tube length to the uh, patient close over the shoulder to prevent the length of the tube uh, obstructed the, the patient movement. Okay, so the next slide is the radiography imaging of the um, placement of the tube. And also uh, the right side of the picture is how you uh, take or secure the uh, NG tube to the patient. Basically, you cut the, the tube halfway uh, into two and then place uh, the 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 uncut on the, the, the uh, only only this picture i find yang ada the eh the you boleh seluruh ni semua dapat buat apa oh okey hmm group punya semua sebelum ni dapat dapat uh, jumpa youtube oh i i i i didn't find it Your group kan, personally I feel lazy lah Because ada group boleh buat tau Tak apalah continue lah You akan duduk rumah, you boleh check, you boleh found, you boleh cari dalam tu, komputer Youtube uh, I didn't put the video in the presentation but I put the link, Youtube link You continue, continue uh, Okay Yeah, so the complication of the NG tube uh, is epistaxis, uh, sinusitis, uh, so throat, and uh, esophageal perforation. Uh, patient may have uh, pneumothorax, uh, aspiration, and also intracranial basement uh, if patient has uh, skull based pressure. So uh, next, uh, so the link is on the uh, yang nombor tiga. The, Apa next? Fisa uh, can click on the link. Boleh klik. Klik lah kalau boleh klik. Terus masukkan lah. Tengok. Hmm. An older child who can cooperate will sit and sip water through a straw while you insert the tube. Your nurse will tell you the best way to hold your child. Now it is time to put the tube in. We need to lubricate the tube because we want it to slide down the nasal passage without causing any irritation. Dip the tube in the lubricant, move it around. Hold the tube in the hand that you write with. The other hand is just back guiding and supporting the tube. Making sure that someone is holding your baby securely, we're going to aim the tube towards the back of the throat because that's the angle that it needs to go in at. I'm going to start slowly feeding the tube in, small movements, feeding it in, feeding it in, feeding it in, and stop when you reach your mark. Then we're going to tape it down so you can have your helper holding on to the tube. If you're having difficulty inserting the tube, if you're putting it in and it stops moving, try pulling back slowly and once again pushing the tube in again. You also want to make sure that the baby's head is in an upright position. It is normal for the baby to cry, to want to move and also to gag. 
These are normal and expected behaviors. But if you're putting the tube in and the baby starts coughing, or there's a color change around the lips, or they're making choking sounds, that is not a normal sign and you need to remove the tube right away. This can mean that the tube is trying to enter the breathing passage, so we need to take that tube out. So remember the signs are coughing, choking, color change around the lips. Trouble breathing, keeps gagging or coughing after tube is placed, or does not seem to be himself. Remember, when in doubt, pull it out. If you're putting the tube in and the tube comes out the child's mouth, you need to pull it out from the nose, re-lubricate, and try it again. Once the tube is in place, have your helper hold it so you can apply the tape. Remove the backing and when you're applying it, try to get it as close to your child's nostril as possible. Press down to get it to stick. Remove the paper. Press securely. You can now take the wire out. Hold the tube and pull on the wire. It should come out easily. And then we're going to close the port. You're going to save the wire and put it back in the package. Now we need to check the placement. To do that, take the syringe, attach it to the port, push three milliliters of air into the tube, Pull back on the plunger until you see some liquid come back into the syringe. And we will put the stomach fluid onto the pH strip. Completely cover the test area on the strip with the fluid. The pH of the stomach fluid should be a range from one to five. If the pH is greater than 5, do not use the tube. Wait 15 to 30 minutes, then recheck the pH. If the pH remains greater than 5, take the tube out and reinsert it. If the pH is still greater than 5, do not use the tube and call your doctor or nurse practitioner. If you're having trouble trying to get the fluid to come back, try these maneuvers. First, Turn your child on their left side. Sometimes moving the child is enough to reposition the tube. Once again, try to pull back. If you're still not getting any fluid, try to push three milliliters of air into the tube. This is a small amount of air and it shouldn't cause any discomfort. Three milliliters of air goes into the tube. And then once again, try to pull back on the plunger to see if this works. If you're still not getting fluid back, go ahead and repeat the air trick. And once again, try to pull back. If you still do not get any fluid back, then wait. Do not put anything into the tube. Wait 20 minutes before trying again. If nothing's still, you can instill the air one more time. Otherwise, you need to take the tube out because we need to get the fluid back to tell us if the tube is in the right spot. So again, when in doubt, pull it out. Once I check placement, I need to flush the tube with water. This will help prevent it from getting clogged. The amount of water depends on the size of your child. For an infant, I'm going to use three milliliters of water. Again, this is tap water. Push the water into the tube slowly. Close the port. And then lastly, let's secure the tube to your child. If we leave the tube hanging, then we're more likely to have the tube come out. This is where you can get creative, or you can do something as simple as taping the tube to your child's outfit. Just keeping it out of their way, taping it to the shoulder is a good idea. You could also pin it to their clothing as well. This way, it'll keep the tube secure and less likely to come out. Once the tube is secure, it's ready to use, and at that point, you're just cleaning up and putting your things away. Now that you've seen a demonstration, let's watch a parent putting a tube in their own child. 
After that, you'll watch an older child inserting their own tube. Uh, uh, I think that's the video. This is okay, only enough. Okay. Okay, next. Yeah, Are it's me nice. It's so nice. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, okay, I will be presenting on the bladder catheterization. So these are my contents. I will start with indication and contraindications, and then the equipments needed, the preparations, the procedure, and lastly the complications. Next slide. So uh, for the indication, actually, there are uh, some therapeutic and also diagnostic uh, indication. So generally, we do uh, for thera therapeutic uh, indication, bladder catheterization is used to obtain urine specimen to look for urinary tract infection. And we can also do... Uh, obtain urine specimen for microscopy and culture. Uh, other than that, uh, the therapeutic indication is to relieve urinary retention. And generally, the bladder catheterization is done to monitor the urine output. As for patient undergoing MCUG, we need to give, uh, they may need uh, antibiotic prophylaxis after the procedure. As for the contraindication, if there is non urethral trauma or non uh, pelvic fracture. If patient presented with perineal hematoma or even there is blood in the meatus, therefore we need to suspect that patient might have pelvic fra fracture. Therefore, uh, bladder catheterization is contraindicated. The next slide. So uh, these are the equipments needed. Uh, the first one is dressing set and then uh, the dressing set may contain like sterile drip, um, absorbent pad, uh, okay, and then uh, urinary catheter of appropriate size. Actually, the size uh, depends on the body weight of the child. If the, uh, the weight of the child is less than 3 kilogram, then we might have to use 4 French. If more than 3 kilogram, uh, 6 French. And for all the children, we can use Foley's catheter 6 up until 10 French, depending on the size of the child. And then uh, lidocaine might also be needed and also KY jelly for lubricant. And lastly, for shrink and water for injection. Next slide. So um, before we begin the procedure, uh, we need to explain the procedure itself to the, uh, explain the procedure, the benefits and risks, and also complications that may occur to the caregiver or to the patient if they are old enough to understand. And we need to ask if there is any allergy to latex because some of the catheter is uh, based on latex and also uh, any allergy to iodine. And of course, uh, we need to take informed consent to the patient or to the caregiver. Next slide. So for the procedure, um, I will give the video after this. So firstly, we need to position the child in a frog leg position and then we clean and drape the perineum. In girls, we need to separate the labia majora with fingers to expose the urethra opening. Meanwhile, in boys, we need to hold the penis perpendicular to body. Then we pass the catheter in gently till the urine is seen and then we advance a few centimeters further. Uh, and then Lastly, after the catheter has been put in, we secure it with the adhesive tape to the lower body and then remove the catheter after the urine collection uh, if purpose is to obtain uh, urine only for microscopy and culture and sensitivity. Uh, and then we connect the catheter to urine bag. Next slide. Next slide. Tak boleh pergi. Next slide. Fisul. Nah, Fisul, next slide. Siapa tak boleh?
Uh, so, uh, um, so uh, for the complications, for the complications they, uh, they, they might, uh, they might occur, occur, occur infections, particularly the, particularly the um, um, catheter related, catheter related urinary, 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 Hello, dah okey dah, dah okey dah. Ha ah, okey, ha ah, okey. Ha ah, ha. Ah. Ada lagi tu, ada lagi tu. Ah, kenapa? Sambung, sambung. So ada kenapa kau tak boleh nak continue? Problem. Uh, sorry doctor, I think there is a problem with uh, connection. Who's connection? Dia punya connection. Ah, uh, person. Tapi so punya connection tu. Boleh proceed tak boleh proceed? Kita postpone je lah. Berapa orang ni nak present? Uh, um, one, one more. One more Siapa? Uh, me, uh, Hajar. Kita Hajar, yes. present dulu lah. Uh, okay. Tak boleh present? Uh, 
Uh, Hafizul, can you open my slide boleh tak? <coughs> tak boleh juga. Hafizul duduk mana? Eh? Hafizul. Kuantan. Kuantan baguslah ada punya tu. <coughs> Sepatutnya konten ni Memalukan konten betul Konten berat tak ada masalah Dia pakai dia pakai apa? Dia pakai Kau tu? Company apa? Hmm? Maxis, Selkom oh, Maxis tak ada Um, excuse me, Doctor. Can we proceed with the last part? Uh, ini, ini tak lepas proceed tu. Uh, to continue. Nadia, habis dah? Uh, Shada, the previous one. Uh, there is only a video presentation for. Tak dapat. The... Ah, tak dapat. No, hmm, kita hajar continue ha. Okay. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good afternoon. I bid to everyone. Uh, I'm Siti Hajar binti Rashid, will be presenting on chess. Yeah, nama-nama uh, nama Siti Hajar. Uh, Siti Hajar Rashid. Okay, uh, next slide. So, uh, there are three techniques for chess uh, physical therapy. The first one is postural education, percussion and also vibration. And chess physiotherapy is used to improve patient's uh, pulmonary function. Okay, next slide. So what are the indications for chest uh, physiotherapy? The first one is to stimulate uh, productive cough uh, and also improve aeration in patients having disease that lead to uh, mucus production. For example, pneumonia, bronchiolitis, bronchiectasis, atelectasis, lung abscess, and also uh, cystic fibrosis, where it can help to mobilize uh, the secretion. Okay, next slide. The contraindication for chest uh, physiotherapy if the patient has active uh, hemoptysis as it can lead to hemorrhage or increase the severity. Coagulopathy with platelet count less than uh, 50,000, rib fracture, spinal injury, uh, bone density deficiency, unstable necks or neck injury, and also if the patient has uh, metastasis. It is contraindication for a uh, chest physio. Okay, next slide. What are the equipment for chest physiotherapy? There are a few equipment before we uh, proceed with the, pr the procedure. For example, the suction catheter, connection tubing, oxygen source, glove, suction source with uh, receptacles, manual ventilation bag, stethoscope, and also personal protective uh, equipment. Okay, next slide. Uh, the pre-procedure assessment and monitoring. Uh, first, we should ask uh, the patient uh, chest to find out any uh, additional sounds such as um, bronchi and also crepitation. Assess patient's ability to be placed in different position. Either the patient is comforting or not. The baseline vital signs such as uh, heart rate, respiratory rate, blood pressure, and also oxygen saturation, and explain uh, the procedure to the to the family regarding the benefit, risk, and also complication. Okay, next slide. Okay, the procedure that I mentioned before it consists of three, which are uh, postural drainage, where the position for gravity is. Uh, important to help mobilize secretion. However, what happens if the patient cannot tolerate uh, the position? Thus, uh, we are allowed to make uh, several modifications, either to keep the patient in flat or elevated position. The second one is uh, percussion, where the percussion we just took about a one to two minute each areas. Uh, that's mean one to two minutes for the left and one to two minutes uh, for the right side of the lung. And it is a uh, painless uh, rhythmic clapping 
with a cup hand over the area of chest. Okay, that's mean we just uh, take our hand and form the C shape or a almost C shape with a loose wrist. Okay, for the percussion. Huh? Budak nangis? Oh, <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, but for the part of vibration, I think uh, the the baby will be uh, comfortable. Okay. And it is performed uh, when the patient is exhaling. And we just take about three to four times each for the vibration. Okay, next slide. Okay, uh, let's, watch, let's watch the position first because uh, as it consists of six positions. However, this video will explain the uh, first two positions, which are anterior segment and also posterior segment of upper uh, loops. Okay. Ina ajar semua semua position ke? Ah uh, tak uh, uh, just two position but the okay. rest I can it later. Tak dengar lah video. Clavicle line. First on the right for one to two minutes. Uh -huh. Ah, yeah. Tak Oh, tak dengar dari awal. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you. That's okay. And start. I'm going to do six different positions on the patient. As I mentioned before, you would normally go for one to two minutes in each position. For the sake of this video, I'm not going to do the full one to two minutes, but that's would be expected of what you would do. I'm going to start with the anterior segments of the upper lobes. The patient should start out supine in a flat position. And I'm going to start with percussing above between the nipple line and the clavicle line, first on the right for one to two minutes, and then on the left for one to two minutes. So I would start, start on the right. I would do percussion. I'd be noting how the patient is tolerating it. Be looking for any color changes or oxygenation changes in the patient. I would continue that for one to two minutes, and then I would follow that with some vibrations. I would wait for the patient to exhale and vibrate. You do that three or four times, and see if you're starting to get any productive secretions from the patient. Then you would move on to the left side and continue to do that for one to two minutes as well. After finishing the anterior upper lobes, you want to move on to the posterior segments of the upper lobes as well. If you start with using the right side, you can keep the patient flat, but when you come over to the left side, you want to elevate the head of the bed some and go ahead and percuss basically between the spine and the axilla. And again, using that cupping motion for one to two minutes as such. And at the end, you want to wait for the patient to exhale and give a few good vibrations. If the patient needs any suctioning, you could go ahead and do this at this point and before you move on to the next position. Point of clarification. Please note that we will now show the appropriate patient positioning for the four remaining positions. It is expected that you would continue to perform percussion and vibration for one to two minutes. Okay, uh, next slide. Okay, thank you. Okay, next slide is uh, anterior middle of lung. Uh, first, we place patient in 10 degree downwards position uh, where we can place a pillow um, 
to make her comfort and then we percussed over the nickel line that is more adjacent to you and uh, followed with a uh, vibration okay next slide uh, for uh, for position is anterior base of lower lung uh, like before that we keep head uh, downwards and percuss uh, below axilla over the lower ribs followed by, uh, by vibration. Okay. Next slide. Uh, the fifth uh, position is lateral base of lower lung, where we percuss uh, on lower ribs along the side. And the last uh, position, uh, okay, where we percuss, uh, where, which is a posterior base of lower lobe that we should percuss on backside. However, we should make sure that uh, we uh, do not overlie the spine and must be away from the uh, kidney to avoid any uh, organ damage to the uh, baby. Okay, next slide. So for, uh, for post-procedure uh, assessment and monitoring, uh, we should uh, suction the secretion to look at uh, the color, the consistency, and also order. Then we should uh, repeat assessment if it is uh, necessary, monitor vital sign, and also uh, ask our patient again for detect any additional sound. Okay, next slide. So what are the complications of uh, chest physiotherapy? Uh, oxygen desaturation, pain or injury to ribs, spine or muscle. Uh, patient could have a vomiting that lead to aspiration. Uh, the chest physio also can increase intracranial pressure, bleeding in lungs that lead to uh, hypotension. Okay, uh, that's all from me. Okay, thank you. Okay, ada apa lagi? Good. I think tiga ada video. Okay, good. Dua ya. Boleh ke transition terdapat video ya? Yeah. Syuhada? Arfa, uh, Arfa boleh tunjuk. Dapat tunjuklah. Ha? Show the video. Ha? Dapat? Tak. Uh, tengah cuba. Hello? Ah, 
dua bila je lah apa nak udang tu sunah sudah makan tadi sudah kata orang kata hmm hmm sudah kata ya apa tinggal tambah dua tinggi kau ada tak ada ada ya menunggu buah tak turun tak turun go This is a video in clinical medicine from the New England Journal of Medicine. Wow. Urethral catheterization permits direct drainage of the urinary bladder and is often performed in pediatric practice. It may be used for diagnostic purposes, such as collection of an uncontaminated urine specimen for culture and urinalysis, but it is essential to obtain a urine specimen from a young child who cannot void on command. Urethral catheterization also may be performed to carry out voiding sister urethrography or to monitor urine output in certain postoperative patients or very ill patients. Therapeutic indications include decompression of acute urinary retention, intermittent catheterization of neurogenic bladder, continuous bladder irrigation for the removal of blood and clots, and drug administration. This video shows a diagnostic urethral catheterization in a male infant using a catheter without a balloon. Urethral catheterization should be avoided in patients formed or attempted previously. Place the patient in the supine fog leg position with knees flexed. Ask an assistant to uh, hold the legs firmly so, in this position, which permits adequate stabilization of the pelvis, so, so, so. complete visualization of the external oh, genital. Yeah. Wearing non-sterile gloves, place the absorbent under pad with the plastic side down beneath the patient's buttocks. <laughs> Gloves. Wash and disinfect your hands. Fill your urethral catheterization kit on a tray. Open the inner paper wrapping to form a sterile field. Remove two of the sterile swabs from the cup. One will be used for the application of the lubricant gel on the catheter, and the other will serve to hold the penis during the procedure. Open the chlorhexidine or iodine disinfectant solution and pour it over the sterile swabs. Open a sterile 10 milliliter syringe pre-filled with lubricant gel and open a sterile catheter. Place them on the sterile field. Disinfect your hands and put on sterile gloves. Lubricate the distal end of the catheter with sterile gel using a sterile swab. Prepare the entire genital area by cleansing three times, going from the center to the periphery using an antiseptic agent. Then place the sterile fenestrated drape over the patient so that the penis is accessible through the opening. Remove your gloves and put on another pair of sterile gloves. Use your non-dominant hand to hold the penis at a 90 degree angle to the patient's legs. Gently retract the foreskin if present. A physiologic phimosis is frequently present during childhood, and the foreskin should never be forced to retract. Use the non-dominant hand to hold the penis throughout the procedure. It is considered non-sterile. With your dominant hand, wash the urethral meatus three times using antiseptic soap cotton swabs. At many pediatric centers, lubricant gel is placed on the catheter before the procedure is performed. At some centers, clinicians also insert lubricant into the urethra. Place the catheter in a sterile container within the sterile field between the patient's legs. The entire procedure can be done using your fingers or forceps with your dominant hand. First, we will demonstrate the procedure when using forceps. While holding the penis in a vertical position, slowly and gently insert the tip of the catheter into the urethral meatus. Slowly advance it into the bladder. The other end of the catheter should remain in the container. You may encounter resistance near the base of the penis because of the anatomic curving of the urethra. Gently pull the penis rosterly to overcome the resistance. You may feel resistance again because of the contraction of the external bladder sphincter. You can overcome this by maintaining traction on the penis while applying gentle but continuous pressure with the catheter. Never force the catheter through the urethra as this may cause trauma or even perforation. After the catheter has entered the bladder, urine should drain through it into the container. When urine flow has ceased, remove the catheter and send the urine for culture and urinalysis. 
If a foreskin is present, gently pull it back over the glands to prevent the development of a paraphimosis. We will now show the insertion technique without the use of forceps. After finishing a sterile prep and positioning the child, hold the lubricated catheter with the fingers of your dominant hand. Insert it through the urethra and into the bladder using the same technique as previously demonstrated. If catheter okay, I think that will be successful in it. Okay, cukup. I think it's ending. Okay lah. Anything? Questions? Hmm. See, bila you baca ada video, lagi lagi susah faham kan? More, uh, tu, you can learn more note ni. Okay, berapa orang? You lima orang ya? Yeah? Mm -mm. Lima. Ya, yeah, sikit ya. Yeah. Okay. Ada lagi presentation? Tadi dah? Uh, okay, finish. Okay. Thank you, Dato. Thank you, Dato. Okay. Sorry, Kora. Hello. Thank you, Arma. Thank you. Sorry.